Pageant patrons, what's up? This is Isaac. If you are a subscriber and you're tuning in again, I want to say thank you so much for your support. Some of you have hit me up in the comments, so I'm trying to respond to everyone. So thank you so much. If this is your first time, welcome to the channel. And you know, consider subscribing, uh, consider giving me a like, but more importantly, in the comments, just let me know where you're from. It's always interesting for me. I'm based here in the States um, and I'm in Texas. So it's always fun to me to see where people are watching my videos from. So thank you in advance. And I certainly do appreciate all of the support and comments that you guys have given me. Everyone is all on the bandwagon for Alexi May Kaimoso Brooks, Miss Elo Elo 2024. And partly because she is black. I am all in favor of the Philippines sending someone to represent the Philippines to Miss Universe 2024, especially a woman of color. I'm not sure that the Philippines has done that before. And so I think what a great look, since the Philippines is considered um, a powerhouse, how good would that look? How progressive would that look for the Miss Universe organization, the Miss Universe Philippines? Let me make sure that I clarify. Um, organization to send someone um, of color to Miss Universe, I think would be a fantastic look. My issue is, let's just not send anyone. Let's make sure that we send the right one. Let's not overlook anyone for whatever reason. And here's the reason why I'm talking, what I'm talking about. One of my commenters said, Mukang, uh, Mukang Lalaki. And if I'm not mistaken, Lalaki in Tagalog is boy. I think, it, I think it's boy. And so, in other words, she looks like a guy. She looks more mannish than female. And that has been one of the criticisms. Hold that thought for just a moment. If you look at um, Zobie Tunzi from, she was Miss Universe 2019, there has been this comparison of Miss Brooks to Zobie from 2019. The, the problem with that is if you look at Zobi, Eve, she does not look like a man at all. In fact, she is very feminine. I think for the most part, people are saying it's the short hair that makes Mix Brooks look, you know, not as feminine. But I tell you what, if you take a look at Zobi, uh, she is, she looks very good and very feminine, very sleek. And I will say that um, Alexi Brooks, she does, she is more muscular, but she is also an athlete. So can I can I get over that? The answer is probably a yes. But if they could soften up her features just a little bit, um, maybe I, I I don't know what women do to soften their features. I mean, I have some ideas, but I'm not going to give them here. But one of the things they're going to have to do is I think that they're going to have to soften her features. Miss Universe 2024 20, uh, is going to be held in Mexico. They always send very feminine women. And does the Philippines want to stand out? Do they want to stand out in that way? I'm not sure. I'm going to let you decide and I'm going to let you tell me. Now, here's the big criticism for me. If you take a look at last year, let me make sure I have this right. Last year, while the Philippines, they did not win a major crown, they were first runner-up in Miss Supranational and Miss Earth. They got third runner-up in Miss International. And then naturally, they got top five in Miss Universe with Michelle D. Now, why is that important? All of those women were feminine, gorgeous, well-spoken. The only one that got a little bit of, of flack was Michelle D because, you know, she also had short hair, but her advocacy was so strong and she just had such a commanding presence that I think you could not help but to have a high degree of respect for her. Now, and again, now let me keep going. Here's my dilemma with Alexi Mae Brooks. This is why I'm not quite sold. Um, just yet. I've been watching several of her interviews. And so this is the issue for me. And some, I think somebody told me once uh, here in one of the comments, maybe that they're not putting a large emphasis on advocacy. But for me, 
advocacy is a huge part of Miss Universe because what are you going to promote when you get there? I don't want you to say that you are going to promote this. You've got to have a, some sort of an advocacy, just a little bit that you are doing right now. And so from Miss Brooks, I heard uh, someone introduce her as she's going to promote humanitarian issues. Well, what are those issues? Okay. The other one is she wants to empower women through sports. I am all for that. But in America, that means, and it's very specific, when you want to empower women in sports, you are saying that you do not want transgender men taking over sports. In the Philippines, it does that mean the same thing? This is where I need your help. I, it does that mean the same thing? Because if it does mean the same thing, then when she is in, her, in an interview and she says, I'm androgynous and women can be feminine or masculine, from my standpoint, I've got to take a little bit of issue with that. Are you saying they're masculine because they can have muscles and still be feminine? Or are you saying that they can be men or women? Am I splitting hairs here? Maybe so. But you have to understand when you represent Miss Universe, you are on an international stage and your words matter. What you say matters. And so if if it's more important to, to you to be androgynous, that is not going to fare well in Mexico because the women are so feminine. They can be bisexual. We don't really care who you sleep with. I, I don't care if you want to be androgynous. I don't care, but when you are on a world stage representing women, there is going to be an issue for a place like the United States where um, pageants aren't as popular as they used to be. And then, especially in those Hispanic cultural, those Hispanic countries, those women tend to be very feminine. When I say very feminine, you can tell the long hair. They, some of them even have the BBLs, the Brazilian butt lifts. They got big butts. They have, you know, the large breasts or, you know, they, they, you can tell that they are very feminine. So if you want to drag that into the, the discussion, I think that's going to hurt the Philippines. And I, I just, and I, and if I'm wrong, I just need you to tell me what you guys think. Because when I have, and it is also when she begins to talk about this, the way that you talk, that I don't, I don't hear any substance in what she's saying. It's all very general, blah, 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 blah. And I, I don't hear any depth. And so that's kind of, that's the issue for me. Because when you, again, when you stand on the, the Miss Universe stage, you are essentially representing, one, the organization, two, the Phil Miss Philippines Universe. And, I, and again, I'm saying if she wins Miss Universe and you are representing women, women collectively, the women in those Latin countries, they do not want to hear you talk about being androgynous. They don't want to hear you talk about uh, women can be uh, feminine and masculine. Here in the United States, that is not what they want to hear. A certain certain segment of the population does. They do want to hear that. But as I sit and I listen, that's the reason I'm not quite sold yet. Do I think she's gorgeous? Yes. Do I think she has the potential to be a great Miss Universe Philippines? The answer is yes. But I've said it before. She's going to have to develop those communication skills. Now, granted, she is only 22. But I think at 22, 23, I think it was Yana Edwana. She had already spoken at the UN, if I'm not mistaken. She spoke at the UN. Okay, and I, I think she was like 22 or 23. Again, if I'm wrong, I don't. I don't mind being corrected. But still, there's got to be that, that. There has to be that depth of what you're able to talk about, and I'm not hearing that just yet. Because. You're gorgeous, yes. You're black, yes. Rebel in those things. But that's not going to win the contest. That's not going to win Miss Universe. The Philippines did not win a major crown in 2023. With the right woman, they can win one or two in 2024. But you're going to have to pick the right woman. The Philippines, is, they're going to, you're going to have to pick the right woman. Right now, I just don't know if Alexa Mae Brooks is it. Let me know what you guys think. If you made it this far, thank you so much. Salamat po.